everybody, this is Jace with RMUS, and I'm here today with, who are you again? Well, John McBride, yeah, that's right. of Autel Robotics. That's uh, right. Yeah, I think I used to hang out here in this building quite a bit. Indeed. But yeah, I am here now with Autel, and happy to talk about what we're going to talk about today. Right, and, and if you can't tell what we're talking about, it should be fairly obvious. Um, fairly new thing on the scene here is that the Evo 2 version 3. Evo um, 2 version 3. Kind so, of a mouthful, but yes. Right. And the point is, you know, we want to answer some questions, kind of clear up a couple of things about, you know, what it is, where it came from. So again, we're on version 3, version 1 and 2 preceded it. Just give us the quick, you know, why version 1, 2, 3. Well, v version 1 was a great drone. It came out being a great uh, foldable drone, uh, worked well, um, the compatibility with it, everybody kind of using it. It was a great drone. Mm -hmm. We did have a major chip shortage, global chip shortage. We had to change over to the V2. That kind of eliminated a couple of the fun things that uh, that people weren't very happy about. But now we've we've kind of stabilized our chipsets and uh, introduced this uh, V3 to better improve a little bit of, of the previous versions, but as well looking into the future to build on top of it. Right, so, and that's kind of the point where V3, we're kind of incremental steps with, with improvements. But first, you know, let's start with the similarities. Mm -hmm. The flight app, exactly the same, still using the Autel still, Explorer that app. That is right. Right, um, batteries as well. Mm -hmm. Same batteries, same charging hub, same power supply, all that stuff carries over. That's right. Props as well. That's right. Right. So from enterprise to enterprise, not consumer to enterprise or vice versa, but enterprise to enterprise, same prop systems. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with the attachments. That's right. right. So all the attachments will work across the, the platforms. Um, as you mentioned, there's a lot of compatibility that you can still do. So if mm -hmm. you're interested in buying a V3, we'll talk a little bit of, a little bit more about yeah. the details. But yes, trying to bring these other pieces into it should be over the kind, The kind of primary concerns. If you're yes. going from a V2 or V1 to 3, it's not quite the upheaval. It's like, oh man, all new batteries, all new chargers, yes. everything and, and all that, in. That it softens the blow thing. a little That's bit, That's right. And it, it is important in the development cycle of any product line to kind of look at that. I mean, every time anybody introduces something brand new and has to buy a whole new fleet of everything, it becomes a little unstable, if you will. <laughs> Thinking so, of the customers that's in right. this way. That's right. Um, but, you know, kind of moving on from that, that's where the similarities are. But, you know, let's talk improvements wise. And one of the biggest things improvement wise over this is communications. Mm -hmm. So you've introduced another frequency band uh, from the remote to the aircraft. Talk about that a little bit. Why is that an improvement? Sure. So uh, we're very familiar with 2.4 and 5.8. Um, we do have some penetration issues when it comes down to that. You know, it's, it's not necessarily how far can we make something go, but sometimes when we're operating and it's not very, very far, but we've got a lot of things in the way, mm -hmm. we can improve this by maintaining 900 megahertz. So right. as we introduce 900 meg, um, this, this also increases our inf infidelity of the video streaming coming through as mm -hmm. well. So we're not just in control, we're also getting good streaming coming in, um, allowing a little bit more uh, distance as well. So, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that will improve there. We can select, do we want to be primary on 2458 or 900, or we can do it auto and let the aircraft yeah, decide frequency hop. which one it wants to do to get the best uh, imagery and the best control right. to you. Right, I mean, uh, to me, more options is almost never a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but moving on from that as well, uh, form factor, it's really very similar, mm -hmm. but there are some differences in here, really specifically the venting and the, and the overall des the design of the body yeah, itself. Yeah, with the new chipset, you know, and again, we're, we're, we're talking a processing capability, you know, being able to do a bit more on the drone, a lot of the AI stuff that's there, some of the, some of the imagery, the sensors we picked, um, it does create a lot of heat, you know, mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that they're breathing well and uh, we're not overheating anything. So that is the primary reason for the form factor change is that we do have a little bit more breathing uh, vents on the side for the right. other thing to operate at, at optimal. Right. So. And anybody doing electronics is no heat is the enemy. That's right. right? So That's improved right. venting, always a great thing. But you kind of just touched on it, which is the next point is processing. Yeah. More advanced processing, which results in really like the big thing, uh, the kind of banner thing of that is uh, image processing and a thermal, both for thermal and RGB. Yeah, let's talk right? about that. Yeah. So, so, so with the with the chipset, it's the primary chipset that does mostly the processing within mm -hmm. the ship. 
there's a lot of things going through that to make decisions to include your imagery. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're looking at our images on our on our devices or whatever like that, sometimes it's not the cleanest. It, it, and that does have a lot to do with that processing power mm -hmm. within the chipset. So uh, by increasing this chipset capability, we're also able to increase our our capabilities on our sensors. Mm -hmm. So touching a little bit on that is better thermal imagery, mm -hmm. uh, live sharper, and sharper, better, crisper. crisper. Um, the definitions are, are not better, and we're not talking specifically resolution, because mm -hmm. we haven't improved, the, we, we haven't changed the 640 resolution, but mm -hmm. we have a much better, nicer picture that's coming through. Yeah, the way it's ingested is just, it's processed in an improved way yep. because of that increased capacity that's of, right. of the processing. And then the RGB side, We've uh, kind of already kind of put this out there in the market on the nano and lights as having low light capabilities because they also share the same chip. Mm -hmm. So because that chip is also being used in those two, two uh, units, their low light capabilities are pretty good as well. So right. uh, bringing these high ISO numbers uh, specifically for public safety mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see things, not necessarily thermal specific, but being able to see things in the dark, inspection places that might be a little bit difficult to see. Mm -hmm. And then, of, of course, all of your filming stuff and doing pretty pictures, you know, pretty yeah. imagery. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's just it's that expansion, that incremental step that makes everything just a little bit nicer, a little bit more effective. That's right. Um, and just, you know, that much better of a tool when we're actually using it. The other thing, you know, again, talking about it is getting into this mm -hmm. is is simplifying a little bit for payloads. Mm -hmm. So we're at two payload options now instead of the four. That's right. Why? So we, we had the 8K, the 6K, the 640T, and the 640R. Um, just to simplify it, because we found, not, not, not that people weren't using it, but just to simplify the production, manufacturing, and as well how these processors are working with each other, um, or working with their sensors, we found it optimally to use that 6K mm -hmm. 20 megapixel sensor, and as well as the 640T, and the RGB camera is different in the 640T. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, continuing that, that advanced, that better just, in just, low light. And and then it, again, it doesn't. E even though we're still compatible, just like the older versions, to switch things around, so we can still take the, a payload that we purchase separately and take it off and put it on and and get it mission specific on whatever we want to do. Right. That's still accessible and capable. Uh, just one thing to note, though. Right. The caveat is is that we can't take V one and two stuff and put it on the V three stuff, mm -hmm. or vice versa. So right. that that's all we got to remember. Mm -hmm. Understandable. And mm -hmm. again, I mean, obviously, the advanced processing and processing and stuff. Um, you know, you can't you can't downgrade or, ba or back right. and forth. So V three to V three on that one. Um, but the other thing about this uh, again is is continuing uh, with the improvements here is now these aircraft are bundled with the smart remote. That's right. So um, when we came out with the smart remote initially, it was sold as a separate item. It right. wasn't bundled with any of, the, any of the gear. You may have purchased them at the same time, but it wasn't uh, from factory uh, included with it. So now mm -hmm. it is inclusive, and uh, the price point is still very close to what it was Without the, without smart, the smart remote, remote. So, so so within you know very short <laughs> I don't I can't tell you right off the top of the head of what it is but but it's comparable to what it already was yeah. to now include the smart controller yeah so you're getting improved value here That's is right. the thing is is being able to get this smart remote which is the massive screen the HDMI out all that good stuff and the two thousand nits of brightness mm -hmm. which is just spoiling everybody um, you know so including that in there. Very close uh, price point wise, you know. Again, it's just that value. It's yeah. that value it's a, it's that you're a, bringing with it this. It is a major value three. add, and and mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, with the 2000 nit and being such a large screen, we've had very positive responses on this on what has been out in the market so far mm -hmm. and people using it so far. Yeah, and just as an additional side note, um, built in with Android 11. That is correct. Right. So. Uh, this really does help a lot with our, our developing partners with apps and things like this is to, is to push it on Android 11 is a little bit hopefully less cumbersome for them to develop and, and create mm -hmm. and our SDK partners hopefully take advantage of that. Right, exactly. And then, I mean, aside from that too, the other thing kind of reintroducing is the live deck, which mm -hmm. to me, that's really, it, it's one of my favorite features about these aircraft that God, it seems like almost nobody knows about, which is unfortunate because we spent at RMUS years trying to come up with the solution or, or being able to take third-party accessories and come up with a solution that's sure. akin to this, 
But the live deck is fantastic, and I think we're going to definitely be spending some more time on later videos, specifically mentioning the live deck. Operation but again, of it. Yeah, exactly. But again, it's the reintroduction of the live deck. Understanding live deck V2 That's right. is compatible with the V3 aircraft. We had to you kind of skipped over the live deck with That's the right. V2 of the aircraft. That's right. Um, but again, one of the most underrated things. Um, yeah, it's I absolutely think it, fantastic. I think it really, you know, when you really try to put it in an application sense and try to build like what you would do with a live deck to, um, you know, having it be sitting there inside of a command center, instant command, and and they don't have any interaction with the pilot. The pilot can be several miles away, in During fact. Their operation. As soon as the drone is turned on, it's connected to the live deck at, at, at that location. Uh, we can also see that not to be tethered, you know. We're not mm -hmm. tethered to the control center. We're not right. having to have somebody hover over the top of us. We can even have somebody just set... Looking over your shoulder. Yeah, just right next know. to us with a simple TV if that's needed, you know, and, mm -hmm. and keep the group over there. So right. that does... It does help a lot. There's... Obviously, you're going to cover a little bit more detail oh, yeah. in... Uh, in how it works, uh, you know, but it, it's really a great option as far as the V3 is concerned. Right, exactly. And I mean, really, that's really changed the public safety possibilities with right. that. The Live Deck is an incredibly powerful tool. Again, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but we love the reintroduction of the Live Deck into this system. The same Live Deck, by the way, is compatible with the Dragonfish. That's correct. So, so. Um, you know, being able to also use the Dragonfish when I'm out there and our, our agencies that currently have them and and instead trying to HDMI or broadcast from the remote and still have a live deck uh, idea or mm -hmm. concept now working with that uh, is certainly brings a, a new yeah. scale to the game. Well, we, we, everybody loves the consistency in the hardware, yes. right? It's, it's really nice to be able to do that. If you know how to do one, you know how to do the yeah. other. It's, it's compatible with both of those systems. So we like that as well. Mm -hmm. And then kind of finally, uh, one of the last things is the SE remote. Yeah, the little guy. Right, the little guy. <laughs> um, so, the, again, the aircraft does come bundled with what you're calling, this is the standard smart remote, which is the smart larger controller. one. Smart controller. Uh, yes, smart yes, controller. Yes, smart controller. <laughs> and then this is the other option. So this is introducing some new stuff that hasn't necessarily been available before. That's right. So the smart controller SE is a smaller 800-nit uh, form factor that... 6.4-inch screen. Yep, right? and I think a, pe a lot of people will, will actually, you know, enjoy the fact that it's not so big. Mm -hmm. However, it's not as expensive either. So right. because it's a little bit smaller, it's not going to be as expensive as a, as a smart controller mm -hmm. on the big side. So um, compatibility-wise, we'll work with any of the V3 models. Uh, we have the option here in the future to have two remotes talking to one single um, Evo and being able to do... You know, exchanging back and forth or mm -hmm. taking control, training aspects, you know, anything like that. So a version of the dual, a dual operator type system. That's right. Uh, with an Evo 3, again, yep. uh, coming in the future. That's right. And um, then uh, for those that may have already have the nanos and lights, this will also uh, in the future be compatible with that as well. Right. So um, a lot of great stuff to just be able to, to not to have a separate device. The quick with deploy. The that, yep. It's that's the big deploy. thing is the quick deploy option, being able to just... Fire up two different a ship and a remote, boom, and you're yeah. off. Little little stand on the back, and you know if we open that little stand, we also have a, a fully removable and magnetic battery, so um, so we can charge those and get them ready. And you know it's it's really a cool cool little unit. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm really a fan of this option, and it also still full uh, HDMI out. Yep. Which is great. You still have those great options. So you know, again, it's just adding to the options, giving people or giving more options for, for the operators. Sure. Is, again, I really appreciate that. And again, the, the simplicity of it, really getting down to brass tacks. This is how it works. Works together with this and this, and it makes it very easy. Mm -hmm. um, so we appreciate that a lot, for sure. Um, you know, so that's kind of wrapping up um, our differences between the V2s, the V3s. You know, why is this an incremental step in there? And then, again, look for more information. We're definitely going to have more videos on these products, you know, going a little bit deeper in the live deck, playing around with remotes and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and, and, and checking out some of this improved low-light imagery and stuff like that. So, of course... Definitely t keep an eye on the channel for those. And John, as always, thank you for coming to join us. Absolutely. Uh, it's always great to come back and, and kind of hang out with the with the crew. We've right, done, right. We've done a lot of this together, and it's always great to be on on this side of the table instead of With on me, your, who used to be on the back. That's right. right. So yeah, thank yeah, you again go. for having me. Right, right. So again, uh, as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, reach out to us at ask at rmus.com.